Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal, which is the direct sequel to The Calculating Stars. I have done a review of the first book, which I will link if you want to go see that. This review will probably spoil some of the major events of the first book because the action here depends on what happens in the first book. So don't watch this if you don't want to be spoiled for anything in the series so far. This Lady Astronaut duology is historical science fiction. It imagines an alternate history where a meteor strikes the Earth in the early 1950s, devastating a large portion of the United States and causing climate change, which will eventually lead to an extinction event. So in order to survive, humanity needs to get off the planet and reach for the stars. The protagonist of these books is Elma York. She was a pilot during World War II, and she's also a very skilled mathematician. She is employed as a computer by the IAC, which is the US's space program, where her husband Nathaniel also works. But Elma wants to be an astronaut, and the first book, The Calculating Stars, is about her struggle and that of the other women pilots who want to become astronauts and want to be allowed into the space program as astronaut candidates. The Fated Sky takes place a couple of years after the end of the first book when a moon base is established. Elma is regularly flying shuttles between the moon and Earth, but she's excluded from other real astronaut duties. She's also excluded from the Mars mission, which is due to take off shortly. But then things arise, the situation changes, and Elma is very abruptly added to the Mars mission. She replaces another woman, and they need her on the mission now for good publicity. Basically, the mission's funding is in jeopardy, and they want to use her reputation as the famous lady astronaut. And much of the book is Elma's experience catching up on the mission, trying to integrate with uh, the people on the mission, and then what it's like for these humans as they're crammed onto two tiny spaceships for a year on their way to Mars, and the problems that arise that they have to fix, mainly on their own without any assistance from Earth. Race plays a much larger role in this story. Obviously, it's present in the first book, but I think it really comes to the fore and becomes something that the characters are all grappling with in the story. Um, there are rising global tensions, as well as tensions at the IAC over the predominant whiteness of the space program and the astronauts, and kind of some homegrown terrorism around that. There are also the continuing issues of gender and what the women are allowed to do. Um, both the black astronauts and the women astronauts on the Mars mission are not allowed to really be astronauts or be scientists. They are given menial housekeeping duties, things like kitchen work and laundry duty. And like it's specifically said that we'll have the women do the laundry because they're better at it. Which does prompt Elma at one point to point out how ridiculous it is that men are expected to learn the very complex technical aspects of their mission, but it's too hard to expect them to learn how to clean a lint filter properly. Like, yeah, we expect you to learn how to fly a spaceship, but we know it's too difficult for you to learn how to do laundry properly. We'll just have the women do that instead. It's ridiculous. But part of this is because the, the black astronauts and the women are never allowed to be in a position where they could make a mistake that the public knows about. If they make any mistake, it will be used by their detractors back on Earth to remove them from the program or to cut funding or to continue their exclusionary policies. So they have to be perfect all the time, and part of how the program deals with this is to just remove them from any duties that are important. An uncomfortable part of this book for me is that while I love Elma, she is a great character, she is very isolated and alienated in much of this book. She doesn't have a lot of friends, and some of that is out of her control. Some of it is the direct result of her own actions. She makes mistakes, but there are also coincidences and decisions foisted upon her that make it difficult for her to get along with this crew or with pretty much anybody in the story sometimes. So it's a bit difficult and uncomfortable to read about this character who is a good person 
but nobody really wants to be her friend. Nobody wants to get close to her. Some of these bridges are mended, but there is that continual tension in the background of a lot of their relationships. So for example, a lot of the crew really resent that Elma um, replaced another woman on, on the mission who was more capable, more trained, and that they kind of get dragged down by Elma needing to catch up with them. But then there are some things where she really wants to help her fellow astronauts, you know, who are people of color, but they have to literally take her aside a couple of times and say, stop trying to help us. Every time you try to help us with the racist issues going on, you make things worse because she doesn't really understand what they have to live with. Basically, she comes a long way in realizing her own privileges and what she can and cannot do to help other people. So it's very difficult to love this character and want her to succeed and see her continually rebuffed by other characters and just very isolated. She doesn't have any real friends, people she can confide in, or people to help her with the isolation and being away from her family and her husband and Earth for years. And I kind of agreed sometimes that it was partly her fault. <laughs> like, she's not a perfect character. The last thing that I want to talk about in regards to Elma's friction with other characters is Stetson Parker. I wish that I talked about Parker in my review of the first book, but I think it really becomes clear what a brilliant character he is in this book. So Stetson Parker is basically the mission commander. He has been involved in the U.S.'s space program since pretty much the very beginning. And his relationship with Elma goes back to World War II. He was court-martialed for sexually harassing women during World War II, and Elma was one of his accusers. They don't like each other. But as much as he is an ass, he is a very skilled professional jackass. And he is part of this mission for, for merit, you know? He earns his spot. He's just honestly a really unpleasant person. Part of Parker's problem is that he is cruel. He is very casually cruel and he needles and digs at and just does unpleasant things with like the women that he works with. And I think his character is so necessary because it personifies some of the larger social attitudes of the time. He's a misogynistic dude, but he's also professional. And when against his objections, he has to start working with women. He does actually work with them professionally, but then he is cruel to them in these little ways and stuff. Um, so it's really easy to say that he is the villain. He is in many ways acting like a villain, but he's also a real person. How did Kowal write a character like that? I don't know. but. I don't think the story would work nearly as well if this character didn't exist. You love to hate him, but you also hate to love him sometimes. Um, so, you know, Elma is my favorite character, but I think at this point I now have to say that Stetson Parker is my second favorite character. He elevates the story, he makes it great, and he, he adds a lot of realism to the story, actually. I think he's very um, symbolic of the kind of men that a woman would really have encountered in a situation like this. Everything else I have to say about this book is pretty much a repeat of what I said about the first book. This is such a good and compelling story. I love the characters and I just didn't want to stop reading. I want more right now. Um, and if you are like me and you want more, there will be more Lady Astronaut novels in the future. I believe that there are two more coming. One is going to be like a parallel story with different characters, and I think the fourth one will return to Elma and Nathaniel's story. That is the one I'm really looking forward to. So, The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. I love this book. This duology is excellent, and I recommend it to anyone. It is so good. So definitely let me know if you've read this book and what you think about it. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.